G'day Blenderheads and Gremlins fans. A couple of weeks ago, I released a fan-made Gremlins 3 trailer. If you haven't seen that yet, you can watch it here. In this video, I'm going to show you how I made the Gremlin using 3D software, and how I brought him to life using motion capture. But my favourite part of all of this is, I did it predominantly using free tools that are available to all of you at home. So, if you want to learn how you can start making movies like this, follow me. For anyone who's not a regular of this channel, I teach character animation using Blender. What's awesome about Blender is it's completely free. And I don't mean it's free for a trial period, or it's free but with these limitations. I mean it's free. Period. No strings attached. Its development is funded by the community, and the licensing is written in such a way that it can't be bought out by a larger company. Legally, it is free, and must remain free forever. What this means is that you can go and download Blender right now using the link in the description, and you can start making animations just like this. And as an added bonus, you can also get a copy of this Gremlin character here, also for free, so you really can start making scenes just like this right now. Among its many features, Blender has a really robust sculpting toolset. Think of it like digital clay that you can smash together and mould into any shape you want. In this case, a gremlin. Blender has some very powerful texturing tools that allow you to add colour, shininess and bumpy details. In this instance, I chose to use another paid program called Substance Painter, which has a more robust painting toolset and allowed me to churn through this work slightly faster. But if you're wanting to try your hand at this kind of work, you could definitely use Blender's free tools. With my little gremlin buddy looking all sexified, I was ready to make him move. And this is where things start to get really cool. To animate the gremlin, I used motion capture. You've probably heard of motion capture before. It's a technology used by big budget Hollywood productions to animate digital characters like the Hulk, Gollum from Lord of the Rings, or interestingly, the Raptors from Jurassic World. A motion capture setup used to cost tens of thousands of dollars, and many of them still do. However, the technology has got to the point where most of this work can be done on your home computer, often for free. I've done a tutorial series on how to get motion capture into Blender using some of the free options available such as Mixamo. But for this project, I was lucky enough to have a friend lend me their motion capture suit to test out. In this case, it was the mocap suit by Rococo, and boy is this thing cool. Not only has it allowed me to create custom animations incredibly quickly, but it also has options for doing real-time recording, meaning that I can dance around in the suit and see the character moving in real time. Now, one of these suits isn't cheap. The suit and the gloves will set you back almost 5,000 Aussie dollars, and I did promise you'd be able to do most of this for free. Now, nothing is going to replace the complete freedom you get by having your own motion capture suit and being able to make your own custom animations. But there are cheap and free alternatives. There's the previously mentioned Mixamo, which has a massive library of completely free motion capture data. And if you've got a little money to splash around, I'd recommend checking out MoCap Online, which has a lot of really essential motion capture clips at quite affordable prices. Or if you really must record your own clips and maybe have a couple of hundred dollars rather than five thousand dollars to throw around, check out Radical. Radical is an AI-driven motion capture solution, and what's amazing is that it can create motion capture from a single video, meaning you can record clips on your smartphone and then turn that into mocap data. So it's now possible to get body motion capture working from your home computer, but what about facial capture? There's been a lot of advancements in facial capture lately, and I wanted to test them out. Unfortunately, this is the part of the pipeline I wasn't able to find a free solution for, but I think I figured out a relatively cheap, and more to the point, easy way to achieve this. I use the Unreal Live Link app, which you can get on your iPhone to record your facial movements. Funny enough, this app uses the same technology that allows you to turn yourself into monkeys, pandas, and other assorted creatures during FaceTime. I chose the Unreal app because unlike a lot of the other apps out there, this one is genuinely free and it doesn't have any hidden paywalls waiting to trap you. Exporting your animation from Live Link gives you a spreadsheet full of numbers that you can drive your character with. But how do you turn all of these random numbers into character animation? For this, I used a Blender plugin called Faceit, and this is the only part of the entire process I had to spend some money on. There's two parts to the Faceit add-on. Firstly, it allows you to automatically generate a face rig, which you can then animate your character with and make them blink, smile, or in the case of the gremlin, snarl. 
As well as that, it has the option to import your Unreal Live Link recording and magically connects everything so that those spreadsheet numbers will now drive your character's face rig. For anyone looking to try these techniques yourself, I'd also recommend both Auto Rig Pro and the Animation Layers add-ons. These add-ons aren't entirely necessary and they are paid add-ons, but they gave me so much extra control over the Gremlins animation that I have to mention them. Auto Rig Pro allows you to quickly generate a skeleton for your character, which allows you to move them around. Now, Blender does come with its own built-in skeleton tool called Rigify, and considering the Gremlin is largely human in shape, I could definitely have gotten away with Rigify. But Auto Rig Pro comes with some advanced motion capture tools that made it really simple for me to transplant my animation from the Rococo suit onto the Gremlin in a process called retargeting. This retargeting process gives you very good results, but they're not always perfect. Although the gremlin is human in shape, there's still some subtle differences between my body shape and that of a gremlin. So to correct these small differences, I use the Animation Layers add-on. Among other things, Animation Layers allows you to layer additional animation over the top of your suit recording, so I can correct little things like foot placement or turn the gremlin's head slightly so we can look directly at the camera. Make no mistake, there's been a lot of trial and error getting to this point, and I wouldn't say that this is an easy thing to do. It's taken me a whole year to bring this character to life. But now that I've got the workflow sorted, I'm really excited for how quickly I believe I can create new characters with new animations. Over the next few months, I'm planning a bunch of tutorials breaking down these processes step by step. If you're interested in coming along on that journey with me, subscribe to the channel. In the meantime, if you've got any specific questions about any of these steps, leave your questions in the comments and I will do my best to answer them. Unfortunately, to the best of my knowledge, there's currently no plans for an actual Gremlins 3 movie. However, there have been rumours going around that a potential Netflix series might be in the works, so fingers crossed. Please Warner Brothers, give us another Gremlins movie. Remember that any software or add-ons that I've mentioned will have a link in the description, and until next time, happy blending.